Very little is known in the West about the lineage of Radhaswami Gurus at Taran Taran, a small Sikh city about 20 miles outside Amritsar. In the Punjab, however, the satsang is well known, and its following numbers in the thousands. I had hoped for several years to meet the then current head of the sect, Pratap Singh. But it was not until August of 1978 that I boarded the bus for Taran Taran. The name literally means a raft which carries one over a large body of water, a town most famous for its large golden Sikh Gurdwara. Once I arrived there, I had to ask the local rickshaw wellers for directions to the ashram. Pictures of a saintly looking Sikh on display in many of the shops made me feel hopeful. Luckily, I found an old rickshaw driver who knew his way to the spiritual center. At the front of the compound, I met the ashram's gatekeeper, whose knowledge of English was exceeded only by my five words of Hindi. We greeted each other with a clear and drawn out Radha Swami. I was ushered into an open, rather empty looking courtyard. A few people who I took to be sadhus were lying in some shade. The heat was about 100 degrees and the humidity felt about 90%. One of the first things I noticed in the ashram was a series of pictures of the different saints of Taran Taran. Most noticeable in the center of the back wall was a picture of the founder, Baba Bhaga Singh. He had a powerful lion-like face. There were also photographs of Sant Deva Singh, the second master in the lineage, and of the late Jagat Singh of Bayas. It was around noontime when I saw Pratap Singh. I liked him immediately. He has a large nose and a robust physique. While the saint of Taran Taran and I conversed, the secretary of the Dara acted as a translator. We discussed the history of the group. The current leader in 1978 was Pratap Singh, and he was installed by Maharaj Charan Singh after Deva Singh's death in the early 1960s. The Taran Taran and Baya Satsangs enjoy a friendly and unique association. The present leaders of the two centers are good friends, often seen together giving spiritual discourses. Pratap Singh discussed with me the practice of Shabad Yoga and how one might succeed in listening to the inner sound. He stressed the need to do as much Simran as possible, that is, the repetition of a holy name or names at the third eye center. His argument was that unless one concentrated one's attention during the day, away from the exterior world, then when one sat for meditation, the world with all its attractions would again arise within the mind. The several hours one devotes to meditation, Pratap Singh argued, were not enough precisely because those hours were spent reminiscing about the day's events and not necessarily focusing on the task of going within. I was reminded during Pratap Singh's conversation of Jagat Singh's admonition to do Simran as if one were collecting or counting precious jewels. Each repetition of a word should be done with the mind fully attentive, much like a jeweler who inspects each diamond with meticulous care. Patrap Singh also displayed during this time a wonderful sense of curiosity. He seemed fascinated by my wristwatch and wanted to know how much it cost me in America. When I told him the price, I think it was around $20, he seemed duly impressed and thought I got a good deal. Indeed, I felt tempted to offer it to him, but knowing that gurus like Pratap Singh did not accept such gifts, I thought it might be rude, so I held back. I was a bit shocked when Pratap Singh then informed me of his fondness for wrestling. The famed saint of Taran Taran, a wrestler? I could tell by the twinkle in his eye that he loved the sport. In fact, he described his recent contest with his friend, the late Dr. Randolph Stone, who was the founder of Polarity Therapy at the house of Charan Singh. I don't know who won the contest, but if I were a betting man, I would place my money on the saint of Taran Taran. To be sure, Pratap Singh is a kind and wise guru, but he also is quite hefty and quite fit. I don't think Dr. Stone had a chance. Shaking Pratap Singh's hand for the last time, feeling his grip grow tighter, I was very tempted to challenge the guru to an arm wrestle. But alas, I was too shy. Of course, Pratap Singh would have none of that, so he stood up and gave me a huge bear hug. Till this day, I can still vividly recall how tightly he squeezed me. I can also never forget the warmth and friendliness of this saint of Tara.